Good morning. My name's Gary, and welcome to the Healing Minute. Got that lovely view of the the window from the chapel. I'm not at the sanctuary myself today, so I won't be there for some for some few weeks. But I'd like you to join me now in the Healing Minute. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing protective love of Mother Earth. Let's read the Harry Edwards prayer. May I be thankful for all the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness. Protect me from all ills and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring your healing ministers close to me so that I may be conscious of their presence and receive guidance and inspiration. Grant me courage and fortitude to overcome all adversity. Let me be conscious of your strength in all times of need. Grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray the good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers, one to the other, and that peace shall endure for all time. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for the highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends, and people for whom they have requested distance healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they're allowed to receive for their highest good. Please join me now in a minute's silence when we can send our thoughts to our friends and loved ones who require healing at this time. And as always, Please remember the animal kingdom. Our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. Amen. And I'd like to close today with 
some stories from Harry Edwards' lovely book, 30 Years of Spiritual Healer. In the stories, he mentions Mr. and Mrs. Burton. And if you don't know, Mr. and Mrs. Burton were his helpers at the sanctuary. George and Olive Burton were pictured with him in one of the pictures which stands outside the healing rooms. And when I'm back at the sanctuary, I will show you that picture again. Anyway, this is what Harry, Harry Woods writes. Whenever there is attunement with spirit, healing can take place at all times. As an example, I will take the case of Ed Weiner, the 16-year-old daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Burton, who one evening was with her mother in the kitchen while supper was being prepared on the electric cooker, the hot plate of which is a circular metal cased spiralling into the centre. Mrs. Burton had a minute or two before she switched off the cooker, the usual red-hot glow having gone, when Edwina, in a moment of distraction, leaned backwards against the hot plate and pressed her hand right down on it. Her hand was badly burnt. Mrs. Burton took immediate action, applying the usual treatment and binding the hand up, and at the same time seeking for the aid of healing the hand. We all expected a badly burnt and blistered hand, but when I saw it the next morning, there was no need for any bandages. There were just three red lines where the spirals had made impacts across the palm and the ball of the thumb. There was not even a blister, apart from the red lines on the hand. The hand was clear. There's no doubt that the hand should have been badly burnt, but it was not, and there was no pain. It was very clear to us at that moment of burning, the spirit doctors were with Edwina and gave her protection. This is not an isolated story, for I have known other occasions when with healing, severe burning has had no ill effects, the flesh being clear of all scarring. Several years ago, we were in Dundee to conduct a healing service, and beforehand, our friends wished to take us for a car ride to enjoy the beautiful Scottish scenery. After a time, we pulled in to have some tea, and I was the last one to get out of the car. Before my fingers were clear of the door, however, the driver forcibly slammed it shut. I felt my finger bones crush under the impact and knew instinctively that my hand had been severely injured. <laughs> the first thought that flashed into my mind was, no healing service tonight. The driver, who was shocked and alarmed at what had happened, immediately flung the door open again and I pulled my hand clear. I looked at my fingers and was amazed. They looked perfectly normal. Cautiously, I felt the bones and they, they seemed all right. So I flexed my fingers and could do so without trouble. I had no pain at all. One cannot escape the sensation of feeling one's bones being crushed, as I certainly did, but the healing was instantaneous. Another personal experience comes to mind. We were travelling by car to Newbury to conduct a healing service when the car skidded on wet leaves and crashed head-on into a telegraph pole. The car was wrecked. We were rescued by the wife of a nearby garage proprietor. Mrs Burton was rather shaken, so it was arranged for her to be taken home while Mr Burton and I continued on to Newbury in another car. I did not know it at the time, but I had severely scraped the front of my left leg, taking off the flesh and exposing the bone. I had no pain. We reached Newbury and carried out the healing demonstration as if nothing had happened. My leg took a while to heal, and the extent of scar tissue, which I still have, is a testimony to the severity of the wound. I never had any medical attention at the time, and what's remarkable is that I did not experience even one twinge of pain or even aching during the whole time the leg injury was healing over. I've mentioned several times the Archbishop's Commission for Divine Healing, and I submitted many special cases to them. Among them were these, which I would like to mention briefly here. One concerned a boy of seven who was in St Bartholomew's Hospital, London, dying from chronic myeloid leukaemia. Medically, nothing could be done for him, and no treatment could be of any avail. The parents were told that their son would soon die. Within 24 hours of distant healing commencing, a change for the better was obvious, and before long the boy's blood count was restored to normal. He was sent home and subsequently went back to school, where he played 
in school sports. The second case was that of Mr Olson, who suffered from spinal collapse. After weeks in hospital, he was finally declared incurable and discharged. His whole body was encased in plaster, even his legs. He could not eat or sleep. The agony was consistent and, with, and paralysis was setting in. It was Christmas Eve when Mr Olson, in utter de desperation, got his wife and son to saw and break off the plaster. And on Christmas morning, he was lifted into a car and brought to me at the sanctuary. His treatment lasted not more than three minutes. The spinal alignment adjusted, all pain left him, and he was able to walk freely and easily and went home to enjoy his Christmas dinner. What a lovely Christmas story. Sometimes people have asked me which case I recall as my most spectacular cure. Always a very difficult question to answer, especially as I myself have never cured anyone. My part simply being that of a channel for the healing power. However, it may well be that this next case comes up very high on the list. A boy at the age of three contracted an undiagnosable condition. He couldn't take food properly. He was just a living skeleton, his condition causing him to sway from side to side. For seven years, he was under constant medical attention, being an inmate of various hospitals around Sheffield and later on in the Yarmouth district. He was seen by a host of, of specialists, but all to no avail. Pint finally being brought to London's Great Ormond Street Hospital, where he was seen by Mr Bonham Carter, and told the boy's father that nothing could be done for him. The disease was never diagnosed or given a name. It was thought to be a freak condition. When the boy was taken home at the age of 12, he was a very sad sight. He was by then thinner than ever, and the swaying from right to left had become more pronounced. Paralysis had set in, and it seemed very clear he would not live for long. It was then that a friend advised the boy's sister to write to me at the sanctuary for distant healing. Within three weeks, he was eating normally and beginning to put on flesh. The swaying ceased and his recovery made rapid headway. Before long, he was able to go to school, take part in school sports and pass his GCE examinations. The last I heard of him, he was a healthy, upright young man. Wonderful stories from such a wonderful man. Uh, doing the healing, healing minute tomorrow, look, Stuart, then on Friday it will be Martin, and Bev is doing Saturday. I'll be there, I'll be back at the, I'll be doing the healing minute again next Wednesday, but I'll be back at the sanctuary in a little while because I'm going into hospital later today for an operation myself. So, hope you all had a very happy Christmas and that you will have a very happy and prosperous new year. Thank you so much for listening to me. Goodbye.